I'm late to the trend, but let's try out the Good Apple Foundation from Kat Von D. We have shades light 18 and also 12. As you can see, the top one is a little bit darker and this one is a little bit lighter. I have been dying to dip into this because I've seen it everywhere. So let's test out the consistency. Oh my god, it's very, very creamy and it looks very full coverage. So let's do our first swatch. Okay. Using a different finger, we're going to be going in with this shade. And I'm also going to be placing that right here. And by the looks of it, they both look like they could work. However, I'm going to go for maybe this one here. And that was light number 12. So using my foundation brush, I am just going to dip into the product. And oh my god, you do not need a lot at all by the looks of it. Ready? Whoa. Oh my goodness. It is literally like a mask. Quite oily, so I want to see how it wears. Let's see how it performs with all the rest of my makeup on it. Go. This foundation... Part two of catching my neighbor's mom talking smack about me. So my best friend tells me all these things that my neighbor was saying about me, obviously. And I got really upset, so I went home and I just started to cry. Because for some reason, I felt like when I was younger, every one of my friend's parents hated me. And I never really knew why. I was always the type of person to like let my friends do whatever they want and encourage them in doing whatever they want, whether that's breaking the rules or following the rules. So I mean, I guess that could be something, but I'm just being a supportive friend, like... <laughs> Sorry, I got off topic. So when I told my mom, she was like, okay, come with me, I'm gonna knock on her door. And I was like, heck no, I do not feel like dealing with this. Mom, you deal with it. So she calls her up on the phone, puts her on speakerphone, confronts her about the situation. And this lady starts going on about how she loves me like I'm her own child, saying that I was never a bad influence on her daughter, and that she actually wanted me to hang out with her daughter more. Like, that's not what she was saying at Bagel. This is a story of the time that I caught my neighbor's mom talking smack about me. So I don't know about you guys, but every single Wednesday in my middle school, we would have a bagel sale. And some people's parents would come in to help out. And my neighbor's mom was one of those parents. And I had a best friend at the time whose mom would also work at the bagel sales. But this best friend of mine, her mom never let us hang out with each other because she felt that I was a bad influence on her. When in reality, it was the complete opposite. She was the one that snuck the boys in her house, if you guys remember that story time, where they peed in a flower pot. So basically her mom wouldn't let us hang out. And sometimes my friend would go with her mom in the morning, basically as a ride to school, and to help out with the bagels too. And one day when she went in with her mom, my neighbor's mom also was there too. So my friend starts eavesdropping into their conversation, and my friend's mom brings me up and says how much of a bad kid I am and a bad influence. And my neighbor's mom was like, oh wow, that's my neighbor, like we always suspected something bad about her, our whole entire neighborhood knows this about her. Basically making stuff up about me. So then I go home crying, tell my- Part 2 about why it's never going to be in a best friend group of three. Like I said, Brittany hated it whenever Mia and I would have our own conversation. And I sat in Becky's spot in gym class, and then she got mad at us because I wanted to finish my conversation with Mia. So she goes over with her other friends that literally bully Mia and I. So at the end of gym class, she walks up to both of us with Brooklyn, and she literally is just standing there. And then Brooklyn goes, do you need me to do it for you? Me and I look at each other like, what the fuck is going on? And then Brittany's like, no, I just wanted to tell you guys that I don't want to be friends with you anymore. She was like, you guys are just so fake. Like, you never include me in anything. Which was completely not true, but we were like, whatever. So then the next day at school, Brittany comes up to Mia and I. And she's like, hey guys. Like, this bitch was bipolar as fuck. And we're like, we thought you didn't want to be friends with us anymore. And she was like, no, I just meant I didn't want to be best friends. Killed those three Wall Street guys. Okay, I'm waiting for the punchline. There is no punchline. It's not a joke. You're serious, aren't you? You're telling us you killed those three young men on the subway? Mm hmm. And why should we believe you? I got nothing left to lose. Nothing can hurt me anymore. <laughs> My life is nothing but a comedy. This boy lied about his age just to date me. Story time. So I ran into his cousin who just so happened to go to the same school as me. What a small world. Anyways, we start having a conversation. And she asked me, oh my god, are you dating Binky? And I was like, oh, how do you know that? Because at the time, I didn't know that she was his cousin. 
and he didn't go to the same school as me. So I didn't know how she would have known that. And then she tells me, oh, that's my cousin. As we're talking, she says, oh, are you going to go to his birthday party? And I'm like, huh, um, no, he actually didn't tell me he was having a birthday party. Weird. And she's like, yeah, that's really weird because it's like coming up next week. And I'm just sitting here like, well, maybe he'll tell me. He probably just had a lot in his mind. And then she says, I can't believe he's going to be 16 already. Time flies. We're going to throw him a sweet 16 party. <laughs> After she says that, I just look at her like, you mean, you mean 18, right? Like, you, I, you said 16. I think you meant 18. Sorry, there has to be a part three. It is now October. It's October. Halloween is coming up and I'm holding a challenge for you all. Each week I will create a new look. This is this week's challenge where you guys get to recreate it and all you have to do is simply tag me to be entered in. Each week there will be a winner with a goodie bag and then the final week coming up to Halloween will be the big, big prize. Tag me in all of your Instagram posts. My Instagram is linked down below and also in my bio. Today we have gone with the Joker. So exciting. But yeah guys, a new week is a new challenge and the Joker is this week's challenge. Next Friday, the winner will be announced and a new challenge will arrive. I love you all and good luck. You're an awful person. Maybe, but I'm rich and I'm pretty, so it doesn't really matter. I said I wasn't gonna do it, but I'm actually gonna do it. I'm gonna expose my weird ass family on my dad's side. So for Thanksgiving, I went home for four days. I'm in the military, so I don't get to go home that often. So I went home, I took my boyfriend and I took my two friends. So when we were there, the party was in the back of the house. You know, everybody's having fun, everybody's drinking, and I drank two beers. And that got me pretty buzzed because I do not drink like that. So uh, I ended up noticing that my little brother wasn't there, so me, my boyfriend, and my dad went to go pick up my little brother from my house and take him to the party. My brother was high, and I was drunk. My boyfriend was sober, and so was my dad. So we get to the house. Mind you, everyone is in the back of the house, partying it up. And I noticed that my cousin was in the front of the house. My cousin, who had been drinking since 12 in the afternoon, and it was already 4, and he hadn't eaten anything. So my dad, my brother, and my boyfriend go to the back of the house where the party's at, and I stay in the front to check on my cousin. My cousin... Andrew um, was in the front and I asked him hey like are you okay do you want to eat something and he's like oh my god that is so nice of you one day my cousin made a tinder and we were having a family barbecue so he came over he was like oh my god Sam like this really hot girl just like matched with me and then he shows me and then I see the profile and it's literally pictures of Madison beer but the name on the profile was like Kalani I was like, bro, I don't know who you think you're fucking texting, but it's not Madison Beer. You're pro you're texting someone's fucking auntie right now. Whole ass auntie. He's like, guess we're about to find out. I was like, <laughs> no, what the f no? He's like, yeah, I just gave her the Addy. She's about to pull up. Like, we're going to meet. Like, it's all cool, Sam. Like, trust me. Trust me. Trust me, he said. Okay. I trusted him. So I see a car pull up and he's like, oh my God, I think it's her. I was like, oh shit. What if I do meet Madison Beer? Um, the door freaking opens. And this old lady pops up. I look at my cousin, and I'm like, go! Go hug her! Go, go, go! He was so excited! It's Kalani! The one and only! Come on! Story time! So once upon a time in grade 5, I was going through this really strange phenomenon where like 5 of my adult teeth decided to all come in at once. Now I already had this really weird obsession with when I had a loose tooth, I loved to like pluck it out of my face like berries off of a vine. So as you can imagine, sitting there with 5 loose teeth in my mouth felt like I was in an orchard on a hot summer's day. My brothers had just re-watched The Exorcist with me a few nights before while babysitting. So it's cinematic masterpiece was so ever fresh in my mind as I sat there not listening to my teacher drone on about numbers, secretly popping my teeth out with my tongue and letting my mouth fill with blood. Till I noticed my dear old classmate Tristane, who used to eat rulers and pick on me, was staring at me. So I looked him dead in the eyes, opened my mouth slowly and let all of the teeth and blood just dribble out onto the desk. Then I said in a low grumble, you will die tonight. He started screaming and then I had to go to church. Part two to my homophobic family kicking me out of the house and replacing me with my best friend. So I cannot believe the audacity of my family literally replacing me with Katie. Not only was she just over there for movie night, but they had actually moved her into my room, the room that I was raised in. I felt so much fury that I had to walk around the neighborhood for a while just to calm down. But eventually I just started to walk back to the house that I was staying at. Once I got in, Katie messaged me. She apologized for being such a bad friend, but then she said she had a secret. And she came out to me as bisexual and begged me not to tell my family. She felt like my family was her own and she didn't want to get kicked out. 
I was so frustrated that she was keeping the same secret that I had in my house, but she's getting to actually stay at my house. It has been a full year now and she is still with them to this day. But thankfully, I'm now living with my boyfriend and his family has accepted me as bisexual. I am honestly so much happier and better off. If you guys have a story that you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. It is now October. It's October. Halloween is coming up and I'm holding a challenge for you all. Each week I will create a new look. This is this week's challenge where you guys get to recreate it and all you have to do is simply tag me to be entered in. Each week there will be a winner with a goodie bag and then the final week coming up to Halloween will be the big, big prize. Tag me in all of your Instagram posts. My Instagram is linked down below and also in my bio. Today we have gone with the Joker. So exciting. But yeah guys, a new week is a new challenge and the Joker is this week's challenge. Next Friday, the winner will be announced and a new challenge will arrive. I love you all and good luck. Story time of why it's never good to be in a best friend group of three. So a little background information. I was in fourth grade and I was nine years old, about to turn 10. Now I know you're thinking, that's really young. Well sis, I was just smart enough to see the red flags early on, unlike half of you who probably didn't see them. Anyway, so I had two friends we're gonna call the one Becky and the one Mia. Now let me tell you a little bit about Becky. Becky was kind of a bitch. Now, anytime that she saw Mia and I having our own conversation, she would pretty much bully us. And she would have two of her other friends tag along and do it also, Brooklyn and Riley. So the one day we're walking to PE and Mia and I are having a conversation. And in our gym class, you had to line up in groups of three. So it would go Mia, Becky, and then me. Well, because I wanted to finish my conversation with Mia, I decided to sit in Becky's spot. So we're sitting down and then Becky marches over to where we're sitting and just stands there and stares at us. Then she walks away and goes and sits with her other friends. And at the end of gym class, she comes back over to us. Like for part two. This boy lied about his age just to date me. Story time. So back when my cute self was a senior in high school, there was this new girl that came to our school. Long story short, me and her ended up becoming super close. I went to her house, spent the night, her family loved me. I mean, why wouldn't they? Anyways, she had a brother. We're gonna call him Binky. Me and Binky got pretty close. Now I want you guys to keep in mind, Binky didn't go to my school because their parents were divorced. So the sister who I was friends with lived with her mom and Binky lived with his dad who lived in another city. But sometimes Binky would go to his mom's house, which is how I met him. Now that we got that out of the way, as me and Binky were getting closer, one day he asked me, hey, how old are you? And I was like, oh, I just turned 17, how about you? He told me, oh, I'm 17 too, but my 18th birthday is coming up. After a while, me and him eventually started dating. Then one day, I ran into his cousin, who happened to go to my school. The rest of this story is crazy. I was in class on Zoom. I wanted to go to sleep, honestly, because like when I'm tired, I go to sleep. I end up falling asleep and then class ends and everyone starts leaving the class. Except me, because I was like in a whole other universe at this point. I was dreaming, I was flying. At this point, me and the teacher are alone in the call. This is the best part. <laughs> then the teacher starts talking to me and he's like, Samantha, wake up. Samantha, please. Samantha, you have another class. He woke me up, but I was half awake, so I didn't really know what was going on. So I thought it was my brother waking me up, and I straight up yelled. I was like, shut up, you fat booger. And so then I realized, oh shit, I just called my teacher a fat booger. And now he scheduled a parent conference. Um, I'm going on Monday, so I'm really excited. <laughs> Story time of how I found out that I was dating my own brother. Yes, biological brother, same mom, same dad. So a little background information, my mom passed away when I was two, my dad is currently in jail, and I live with my grandma. So at the time, I was 14, about to be 15, he was 17, about to be 18. So how this all started is one day I was at the baseball game with my friends, and he happened to be there. I was fangirling over this boy. Like, I saw him, and I was like, I I'm going to marry him one day. I was feeling a little bold, so I went over and got his snap. And then I figured out that he had the same last name as me, and I was like, dude, that is dope. My exact words were, now I don't have to change my last name when we get married. So we hung out the rest of the baseball game and I was starting to fall in love with this kid. Like his smile, his laugh, I talked about him to my friends the rest of the night. And me and him started snapping for a while. So we started to hang out a lot. We may have hooked up a couple times. But I had to keep this all secret from my grandma because she forbid it I dated somebody. So fast forward a couple weeks, we start dating. Months and months and months go by. Our nine months come and I finally tell my grandma. And this is where it gets bad. I'm running out of time like for part two. So Wednesday in elementary school, it was lunchtime. A bitch had to go potty. It was poo poo time. So I remember I went to the restroom and I was exploding or whatever. And these girls walked in. We're gonna call them the chipettes, okay? <laughs> this is the best pop. <laughs> so the chipettes start yelling in the bathroom. Is someone here? Can someone hear me? Like I didn't say anything. I was literally taking a shit. Like what? these girls dead ass start laughing. 
They turn off the lights in the bathroom. They turn on all the sinks, whatever. And they start saying like Bloody Mary or some shit. And then the chipettes run out of the bathroom and shut the door. So here I am getting casted on. I remember seeing a shadow. I, I fell on my ass. And I start screaming and crying. It wasn't good. So someone called the janitor. Janitor walks in to check up on me. It's a guy. 